Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Samuel. Uh, I'm here from the Stacked Cloud. Um, and um, I think you can already jump to the next slide, Moritz. Um, so what we're going to talk today about is a little bit, bit of intro, then a quick uh, step of what we need to do on OpenStack to provide the, um, the mentioned uh, services. Uh, and also Felix uh, Moritz will give a little bit more of an, an, an in-depth in -depth, um, usage about the Constellation feature. So, But at first, I will just uh, give a few words about what is the Stacked Cloud. And then we'll dive into that. So the Stacked Cloud uh, is uh, not a company. It's a it's a brand name uh, from the Schwarz IT. The Schwarz IT is the central service provider for um, a big retail brands, Kaufland, Lidl, some production um, and recycling companies. But it's at first a service provider um, and provides uh, internal services for um, the Schwarz Group, which is a, a very big uh, IT infrastructure. And also part of that branch is then to provide a cloud offering. Its um, first customer is the Schwarz Group itself, um, but it's also open now since 2022 to a public customer. Um, yes. Okay. Um, so let me dive into the topic of today uh, and this talk. I think it f perfectly uh, follows the, the previous one, right? Um, because we see all the big hyperscalers having uh, confidential computing solutions uh, available. Uh, we now saw how Azure is implementing their confidential VM solution and the internals of that. But the question we try to, to, to answer and, and in this project with, the, with Stack It uh, is what about open source? What about the open source landscape? How does the open source cloud stack would work together with confidential computing and, uh, and co uh, containerized workloads. And I think from the discussion we had in the Q&A before, uh, this is a very interesting topic because when we think about attestation and verifying what's actually being running inside our confidential VMs, open source is a very crucial part of that. Being able to attest to what's running is kind of the building block we, we, we can build on. So in our, in, in our project together, um, we explored how a usual cloud stack that we, um, that we know today for containerized workloads based on hypervisors, virtual machines, Kubernetes, and then your containers, how can we uh, implement that using open source components based on OpenStack, based on the Linux KVM hypervisor, and then based on Constellation as the confidential Kubernetes on top. So this was the setting, this was the mission, um, and we start from the bottom. Uh, so Samuel is giving you a short introduction on all the things about the hypervisor and OpenStack. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you, Moritz. Um, so we have a, f a little bit uh, uh, of a, a bunch of requirements we need to fulfill to provide this this whole stack. Um, at first, um, Moritz mentioned it, uh, we're going to use uh, AMD SEV, so we are limited to the choice of our uh, pro uh, processor. In this case, um, we need uh, at least an AMD ROM processor, preferably an AMD Milan processor, which in our case we use on 7713P, where the P is just for single socket. Um, then we need... Um, either an older kernel with the host patches uh, manually patched to them, or we can use a kernel greater than 519. In our case, we use an Ubuntu 2204, which is basically the LTS release, uh, with the 6.6 uh, generic kernel. And then we need a specific libvirt version, which is our virtualization daemon, which talks later uh, and helps us in implementing uh, the virtual machine itself. Um, in this case, we need um, basically bigger than 5.1. In our case, we use libvirt 8. Uh, and also the, the uh, deriving QEMU version, um, which is later doing the, the uh, emulation and virtualization, uh, needs to have a specific version. Um, this requirement is not that big because 2.12 is very old. In our case, we use um, QEMU 6 version uh, 6.2. Um, this is basically like what we need as a setup. And then uh, within our uh, operating system, we need to um, enable certain kernel flags, which is basically mem encrypt on and uh, the KVM AMD SEV. Um, also set to one. Um, yeah, so this is just basically from a hypervisor perspective. So with this step uh, fulfilled, we have basically a Linux which could provide these features we need, but there's way more to it. So we use OpenStack, as Morris mentioned. In our case, we run OpenStack Yoga as a release, uh, which is not the newest, but not very very old in this case. So it's uh, just two releases old at the uh, 
a certain uh, at the current timestamp. Um, and we need to fulfill certain requirements. First, we need a UEFI boot, which is uh, possible since OpenStack Newton, which is a very old release in this case. Uh, for this, we just need um, a, a UEFI firmware on the hypervisor itself. Uh, in this case, we use just the OVMF uh, firmware. And uh, the customer itself, in this case, the VM, Moritz is building the constellation on top, needs to request this either via an image or in flavor. But this is like a, a certain trend you will see through the other features uh, we will also see. Then we need the uh, emulated uh, trusted platform module, module. So the VM can access uh, like a local uh, TPM device. This is supported in OpenStack since uh, Victoria. And this requires uh, SVTPM binaries and some certain libraries also uh, on the hypervisor. Uh, relevant here is that we need a key manager service. So to encrypt the data at rest, um, so no one besides the user who is uh, intent to can access uh, the, uh, the key stuff. Um, in this case, we use OpenStack Barbican for that. Um, OpenStack Barbican is basically an API wrapper uh, for a secret store. There are some different endpoints, uh, backends you can use. In our case, we use um, a HashiVault backend for that. Uh, yes, and for the uh, TPM, we can then select version between 1.2 and 2, and also the type of uh, model between TIS and CRV. And also, this is requestable via an image or in flavor. And also, I guess, one of the more important things is the AMD SEV fl uh, flags, which needs to be provided to the VM, which is supported since OpenStack train. And it's also requestable via an image on flavor. And it uh, has a requirement that it also needs to have uh, the machine type, which is basically the virtual motherboard or chipset, um, to be set to Q35, which is a rather newer, in case of uh, QEMU, um, emulated motherboard uh, chipset. Yes, and these are the, basically the three steps we need to follow to provide um, all the requirements uh, Moritz has for the constellation feature. Perfect, right. So this provides us with, the, with a host, with a cloud stack to finally launch um, confidential virtual machines, right? So everything Samuel described, the OpenStack, the hypervisor, is essentially the untrusted world, the host, that is just providing the capabilities of the hardware to our confidential uh, virtual machines. So now from a guest perspective, from somebody that deploys uh, a machine in such environment, the question is, what, what do we need here? What are the requirements for, for running your image on top of such OpenStack uh, environment? And essentially, um, it works as usual. So you have some kind of firmware component, some UF, UFI, and with SEVES, that was the previous generation that didn't even need to be enlightened some in, in a way, just needed to not use the uh, system management mode. But there is uh, um, firmware available that, that does that. Uh, with the, the next generation, with the SEV SMP, we need uh, some enlightenment, but we will see that on the, on the next slide. And then on top of that, we need a enlightened guest image. Enlightened means there are some patches so that this image can run inside such confidential. So given such patch kernel and these guest patches, even the latest generation is already merged upstream in the Linux kernel. So even for SNP, SEV SNP, uh, these patches are upstream since 519. So you can build such image and then you can boot it on top of OpenStack. The more interesting question is, how can we attest this? How can we verify that image? Um, that, and um, the, the, the way that works uh, with SEV and also TDX is that we do some form of measured boot approach. If you're familiar with the world of, of TPMs, um, that means every component in the boot chain measures the next one. And uh, for that, we need some form of runtime measurements so that the firmware can create a measurement, for example, for the bootloader and the bootloader for the kernel and so on and so forth and so forth. And specifically for SEV, this is not provided in hardware. It's not, you can't create a runtime measurement. The, 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 the hardware measures the initial component, the firmware that's loaded or the, the, the shim, whatever you want to call it, that's loaded is measured and then you need to implement that in software. And with the previous generation with SEV ES, uh, there was, um, there's like simply no, no implementation that's open source that's, uh, that is available to do that as part of the confidential VM itself. 
So instead, and this is what Samuel mentioned with the VTPN, we can implement an approach that's very similar to the one that is available, uh, for example, in, in the Google Cloud Platform, where we use uh, we, we split that trust. So we create an attestation statement for the, for the firmware, for the initial um, component that's loaded. And all the other runtime measurements, all the rest of the measured boot, we measure as part uh, into that VTPM that's emulated by the hypervisor. That means the hypervisor is not completely isolated from the TCB here, but it's uh, um, something that works and that's uh, being provided uh, also by the, by the hyperscalers currently. Um, and we can do that same in OpenStack. By, by using this approach. With the next generation, um, with SAV, SNP, there's something in the pipeline in the Linux kernel and also another talk that's coming up at OC3 here um, on, on how this works. Uh, I will have that on the last slide. Is that SAV, SNP will now be able to split the memory uh, of such confidential VM into uh, di different layers and you can run a a, uh, what was it called the previous uh, presentation? A paravisor, if you will, um, a service module in a higher privilege layer that implements that TPM. So then uh, I can split that, and in the less privileged world, I run my firmware, I run my uh, kernel. They, of course, need to be enlightened that they are now in a different privilege layer, but then they can use the VTPN and create those runtime measurements directly in the confidential VM. And by that, we completely exclude the hypervisor from the TCB. The details for that, I would refer you to another talk that's coming up later. Um, so how do we implement that now, right? UFI firmware, we can just use open source OVMF, EDK2, uh, needs to be enlightened for, for SMP. But the patches are being upstreamed or being worked on currently. Uh, then we need a bootloader that's able to do measured boot. Almost all bootloaders will do that. Grub is a bit larger, a larger TCB, system D boot, for example, does that uh, with a smaller footprint. Kernel, um, we use unified kernel images because it helps us to measure them at, as one. So we don't need to measure all the individual components, but essentially you need a kernel that's enlightened and that is being measured by the bootloader. And then for Kubernetes nodes specifically, we need some file system that is integrity protected so they can't be modified at runtime. And we need a stateful disk that's being encrypted and also integrity protected to store any stateful information. All of this is already provided by the Linux kernel doing it through device mappers. We can just use that. And then we have a fully verifiable, uh, immutable Kubernetes image that we, or confidential VM, that we can use as our Kubernetes node images. And this is where now uh, we build on top, uh, where we can uh, bootstrap Constellation from. Constellation is a confidential Kubernetes. Again, here, I would refer you to another talk I have on uh, the link on the, on, the, on the last slide, about all the details about Constellation, but just think of it as a confidential Kubernetes that builds up on those immutable node images. But since it's a Kubernetes, what's being interesting here is what features does OpenStack provide to run Kubernetes on top of those VMs? And here we see the regular uh, cloud native features like load balancing, scaling, authentication and, and, and storage. Maybe, yeah, some way uh, you can, can uh, yes. add some details about what yeah. OpenStack provides and doesn't provide. Yeah, sure. So the load balancer feature is uh, available. It was uh, back in the past, it was uh, part of the Neutron, which is basically the network layer of OpenStack. It's then uh, been parted out into Octavia, um, which is uh, not my favorite product. Um, Stackit deemed it unfit to not work. So Stackit is building its own load balancer as Octavia is not fit, at, uh, um, fit up for the process in this case. But technically, there is an OpenStack load balancer uh, part here. Um, and if you also we refer later to the GitHub page, Stackit also published its own load balancer for Kubernetes, which is basically a lightweight uh, Envoy uh, build up. And also for scaling, so there is no uh, inherent way to auto scale. There's the way to do orchestration via heat, um, which you could do as a template engine, basically, but uh, there is no horizontal auto scaler uh, in, in OpenStack at all currently. Uh, we have also the authentication part um, where the authentication part about um, service tokens and identity is uh, technically there, but it's not bridged down to a VM. So we cannot uh, automatically create a server where we have an inherent identity provided to the VM um, 
basically on default. So this is not a feature which is currently uh, available. You can build um, glue code around that and, and patch that in, but it's the, the bits and pieces are there, but it's not possibly in the right order together to provide this um, service. And also for storage, um, it's pretty easy. So we can use the Cinder CSI driver where Cinder is the provider or the, the uh, umbrella API for storage. And this is uh, available as for every other Kubernetes using the Cinder CSI driver and talk to the Cinder API. All right, thanks. Yeah, so from a UX, from a user perspective, what does it mean? If you put all of this together, you get a completely open source cloud stack with a confidential Kubernetes on top. With Constellation, um, get a simple CLI to, to do that. You can just create a cluster on OpenStack and um, uh, attest it down to source code because all of the components are open source. So in the end, we have a running confidential, completely isolated cluster uh, on top of OpenStack, on the Stacked Cloud uh, with most of the cloud features and uh, like scaling and so forth, what we, what we saw um, and all of the other features are probably be available soon. And once we have all the SCV SMP patches also in upstream kernel and this um, power visor uh, that's being worked on, you will have attestation that completely isolates even against uh, the hypervisor. Thank you very much. You can check out uh, the open source stuff from Stackit on GitHub, also Constellation is open source, check it there. And the talks I was promising to refer to is the one about Constellation later on uh, stage one. And also uh, Jörg Rödel's talk about the um, secure service module, which is the paravisor, if you want to call it like that, uh, for SCV SMP. Perfect. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks.